So our project name was Safe Steps and we're the legendary lasagnas. Our instructor was Manasi and my name is Sean Sam. Uh, I'm Akshit. I'm Ovi. My name is Eli. My name is Hanuman. So here's our table of contents of what we're gonna go over in the slides. So first is our objectives. And we wanted to help uh, the blind and elderly because they're becoming more dependent on others for basic necessities. For people with vision impairment, navigation can be a challenge. And our objective is to help people gain some independence. So we come up with a solution that is to develop an AI powered assistive tool that employs advanced object detection and depth estimation techniques to help the blind and elderly individuals navigate their environments more safely and independently. We want this uh, model to detect potential hazards or obstacles in the surrounding, like people, cars, poles, or any common everyday object you could find uh, when you walk the street. So our two biggest target groups are the elderly and the blind. And this is just a brief timeline of our project and how we actually went about doing it. So first we first collected all of our data from Google and then we inputted them both into the object detection and the depth estimation models. And then from there, we combined them both onto our Gradio application for our final output. So the first step we had to take was the class creation. So we first brainstormed the different classes that we wanted our AI to detect. Um, and the list of this was cars, people, mailboxes, puddles, stairs, trash cans, and street signs slash lamps. And after, after knowing this, uh, we went on Google and started searching uh, using queries to find the images that we actually wanted our AI to be trained upon. And some examples of these queries that we used was like busy street with cars, street with puddle, puddles and cars street with people and mailboxes. And each query would have a, a ton of images about like around a hundred ish. And by having enough queries, we were able to send this and download onto RoboFlow so that we can now set up these images to be trained by our AI. So in RoboFlow, now that we have all these hundreds of images, we now designated um, a groups of them in, for each team member. And then what each of us did was filter these images by annotating it with uh, certain classes that are actually in the images, for example, the images on the slide. These are different classes assigned, annotated for each class. And then we also had to delete and take out images that we did not want our AI to be trained upon. And after that, after everyone was done annotating and filtering, now our data was all set for our AI to now be training with. As for object detection, the parameters we use, we use the Ultralytics YOLO V5 model with the per hyper parameters of learning rate of 0.01, .01 a momentum of 0.937, a weight decay of 0.035, and we use the stochastic gradient descent optimizer as well as 30 epochs. We were at first freezing the first 13 layers of the YOLO model and also modified the weights of the remaining layers while in the training process. We also added new classes in the new existing data sets such as mailboxes and trash cans and had a box loss of 35% and a class loss of 28%. Uh, for depth estimation, we used uh, monocular depth estimation to predict the object's distance from the camera. And uh, the data set uses MIX-6, which contains around 1.4 million images. The model was initialized with ImageNet um, pre-trained weights. So the depth, uh, the depth estimation model um, uh, is designed to process input images and convert them into grayscale representations. And in this grayscale format, um, objects that are closer to the camera appear brighter, while objects farther away appear darker. And this property allows the model to identify when objects are in close proximity to the camera, sig uh, signaling potential hazards or uh, obstacles. When we froze the hidden layers while training the model, we got to train and validate set losses. And then we wanted a convent score that resulted in both a solid precision and good recall score. So we had a loss score of around 30%. Um, while performing object, 
for every object you could give give the distance from the camera uh no not the distance just the depth yeah uh, so while performing object detection there was an abundance of images for classes like people in cars and many underrepresented classes like puddles um which create some data imbalance and increase the box loss which is just how well the predicted bounding box covers an object and then we solved this by fine-tuning the data set and adding more relevant images another problem was that the original labels from the cocoa data set data set in the yolo v5 model weren't getting detected properly so we froze the initial layers in the yolo model so uh, we were fine-tuning the hyperparameters to keep the original labels intact. And then um, object detection also seemed to struggle with detecting different types of trash cans, mailboxes, and puddles. So additional images were added to the data set and the model was trained again. Now for our future plans, so we have uh, several things. First is actually adding live, uh, live video capture to increase the functionality of the product. And we decided to use picture input instead of live video feed because Everyone has everyone, not everyone has access to 200 cameras, so they can't use both object detection and depth estimation. And the second thing was to implement like an app or a cane so that people can actually use this to their advantage. And the reason for this is because they just having it on a website is not is not enough to like go around the streets. And another future plan is to actually find a way for the person using the model to actually have some sort of way to find out what the AI is actually detecting. And this could be things like sound cues or vibrations to actually alert any user of any obstacle that they are they might face with the AI, which the AI will inform them about. And finally, uh, the AI is, is not perfect, so we would also want to expand data sets on other uh, street obstacles like trees, fire hydrants, spikes, and any real, any real typical obstacles that you can think of when it comes to just walking down the street. So what did we learn from this three week course? Well, I learned a lot of useful concepts and learned not just about computer vision and neural networks in Python, but communicating to the team to accomplish our final goal. Uh, I learned how to create an AI model that not only detects objects, but also can check the depth the objects are from the camera. I also learned a lot, including not just about how CV actually works, but also a hands-on experience with creating these different models. Uh, I was able to have a much deeper understanding of how AIs work with through things like CNN and BIT, and also how to actually create an AI from scratch and by collecting these images and actually using the AI to train with these images. I learned about neural networks and CNNs, as well as how to scrape images from Google. And now we will go to our website to test the model. So once again, the model or the project is called Safe Steps. And here's our project specifications. We want to help the blind and elderly become more independent so we used a model that can detect objects and find out their distance from the person. Then this could signify to the person that the object is near through vibrations or sounds. And then when we test it, it takes a while, but it should detect objects or people in cars. So here it detects all the people up close and in, even in the background, as well as the cars. And then here is the depth estimation where the people who are closer show up as white and the objects in the background are black because they're far away. Our team is right here and you can click on us to find out more about us. And here's our timeline, which has even more information about the processes all the way up to the finish line. Uh, thank you for listening.